welcome to Series 6 of Property Elevator, the show where we give budding property developers the chance to pitch their deals to our six seasoned property professionals. These are John Howard, Ranjan Bhattacharya, Paul Mahoney, Nicholas Woolwork, Hayley Andrews and Scott Marshall, or who we call our property investment angels. Now, we all know property is not a game for the faint-hearted. With hundreds of thousands, if not millions of pounds at stake, yes, the rewards can be great, but if it goes wrong, it can go very wrong very quickly. Hi, I'm Scott Marshall, Founder and Managing Director of Roma Finance, one of the UK's leading specialist finance non-bank lenders. In my career, I've done almost 20,000 transactions, and as Roma Finance, we've done um, two and a half thousand transactions for almost 500 million pounds worth of property deals. I'm here because I love to lend. I mean, coming into a, a, an environment like this, where you're looking for 1.4 million pounds, which is a lot of money. It's a lot of money, yeah. Okay, I think that you need to be preparing properly to, to put a pitch like that together in front of other people looking for investment. Hi, I'm Hayley Andrews. I'm the co-founder of Your Freedom Empire, a business and property training organization. I've been in the industry for 20 years. I'm a developer and property entrepreneur. Can you tell us a little bit about you? What's your background and how, what you're going to bring to the table? Hi, I'm Paul Mahoney. I'm the founder and chairman of the UK's leading property investment advisory company, Nova Financial Group. I'm also an experienced property investor and developer. There needs to be a strong reason we would want and need to live here, and that's going to determine what you can sell them for and how quickly you can sell them. Sure, sure. But what are the reasons we would want to live in this location? Hi, I'm Nicholas Woolwork, investor, developer and co-founder of wealthlabs.co.uk, one of the UK's leading wealth creation and property training companies. Got it. What slightly worries me is how confident you are of that bill cost. Yeah. Uh, and you're not, not really listening to five, eight experienced angels no, telling you that is wildly underestimated. Yeah. My name is Ranjan Bhattacharya. I'm an investor and developer for the last 30 years. I specialise in converting defunct commercial buildings to residential use. I'm the founder of Succeed in Property, the UK's leading training course provider for commercial property investors and developers. My concern is that if a top five house builder decided that they don't want to build these three parcels of land out, what is it that you have seen that those guys are missing? Hello, I'm John Howard, and I've been a property developer and investor for over 40 years. During that time, I bought and sold over 4,000 properties in 84 different locations across the UK. That makes me the most experienced and most successful angel of them all. Although I wasn't in the studio, you will be hearing from me after each pitch. Enjoy the show. Hello, and welcome to episode four of Property Elevator. It's time to get those deals done. Manny, welcome to Property Elevator. Hi Lizzie, nice to meet you. Um, what about the deal that you've brought today? Today I've brought with me a development of 18 units, which will consist of one and two bed apartments, and also three and four bed houses based in Stoke-on-Trent. And how much investment are you looking for from one of the angels today? So the cost of the two parcels of land, which are contained in the SPV, is 350,000, but I'd actually be looking for 305,000 and myself will put in 45,000. How much potential profit is there from the uh, investment? So the whole deal will net a profit of 850,000, a gross profit of 1.1 million and the investor will be looking at getting 500,000 back and a net profit of 200,000 which will give them an ROI of 65%. Great, well good luck. I'm going to send you in now to the angels and uh, I hope it goes very well. My fingers are crossed. We'll chat when you get out. Cheers, thank you. So we're going up to Stoke-on-Trent now with the scheme to build 18 uh, houses, all with planning permission uh, from uh, developer Emmanuel, his name is. Um, now he's looking for £305,000 with a 60-40 split in our favour. So it sounds very promising. It does indeed. Hi Angels, I'm here today to present to you a ground up development of 18 units. This de development will consist of one and two bed apartments as well as three and, three and four bedroom houses. This development is located in Stoke-on-Trent. 
This project has a GDV of 3.6 million, a build cost of 2.1 million, a gross profit of 1.1 million, and a net profit of circa 850,000. Today, I'll look to purchase the two plots of land that sit within an SPV for 350,000. I'll be willing to put in my own money of 45,000, so today I'm requesting 305,000. In terms of profit split, I'll be looking to do a 60-40 profit split, 60% your way, 40% my way. That will give you guys a return of half a million and a net profit of 200,000, leaving you with an ROI of 65%. What's amazing about this deal is that there's no section 106 or still payments required or any affordable housing allocation. So you're looking for 305,000 um, pounds. Where are you at with the site at the moment? Do you own it? Do you not own it? Um, is there some lending on it? Is it unencumbered? Uh -huh. Where are you at with all of that? So let me give you some background regarding the deal. So originally, one of the five-star house builders acquired the site and they put an, out, an application for 108 units. For, some, for one reason or another, they did not build out that development. We've come along. At all? Then they built some of it, but left these three parcels of land left. Okay. So we've come along and put through a certificate of lawful use. So we didn't vary the sort of planning application in order to sort of proceed quickly. So we've put in that certificate of lawful use and we've also managed to remediate all the sort of consents needed. So now all outstanding consent has been satisfied. So we don't need to sort of, so we can start straight away. Sorry. Sorry, what's the certificate of lawful use for? It's for the outline that they originally had. Oh, I see. Because it obviously expired because it was longer than three years. So we had to put that in, in order to sort of use that sort of outline planning to sort of carry on on our development. If it, from my experience, if, if there is um, or planning consent on a site for say 100 or so units and a start is made, so obviously a load of them have already been built, then the remaining planning is then excellent, which means it's valid into, into perpetuity. That's exactly, we want it to be 100% sure. That's correct. So that's why we went for the certificate of law for you to, to sort of tell the council that we are not varying a planning application at all. We're going of what was actually issued in 2006. We just want to make sure that what we're doing is lawful. My concern is that if a top five house builder decided that they don't want to build these three parcels of land out, what is it that you have seen that those guys have missed? I mean, from my research, that planning consent was granted in 2006. And the only thing I could think of were two things, what, where the market was at in 2006, and potentially it wasn't the right time to build. So they might have just left those three parcels yeah. of land in out. Interestingly, we see that a lot, where there is part of a site that a major house builder, for whatever reason, doesn't want to build, or if it's a, a commercial unit that's on there that they don't want to convert. Um, there's often the kind of outfill pieces that they want to sell off because they've got the main site they want to focus on. So we often... Sorry, but is there a reason for that? Sorry, for like that, sorry, difficult groundwork? So I, I often see, sorry, I, of, I mm. often see that there are sites where the major house builders don't want to build out the entire site and so they sell off or don't build out parcels of the site and uh, so there's great opportunities there. And the, the timing could be the issue, right? 2006, financial crisis 2007, not much got built in 2008. Yeah, absolutely. It makes sense. Can you tell us a little bit about you? What's your background and how what you're going to bring to the table? Yeah, so other my, than your forty odd K. <laughs> so my background is um, I've got a sort of portfolio of, of buy to lets and HMOs, uh, six to be precise, in the northwest. I also currently I'm employed by a five star builder in the land and planning department. Mm, interesting okay. background. Going back to my question earlier, which you didn't answer, which was who owns the site at the moment um, and what debt, if any, yeah. is outstanding on it? So to be specific, I've got this site secured that needs to be, that needs to complete at the end of this month. It's a one-to-one -one negotiation, negotiator, negotiation with a developer who currently owns the site. And the problem is they don't have the funds to build out the three parcels of land. So in this actual development, there's three parcels. There's one, two, and three. One, one right now is being built as we speak and they've actually sold some of the plots off plan. Number two has just had a site clearance done and number three has had the foundations laid. The good thing about number three having the foundation laid is that I've now known that the reason why they didn't 
the other house builder didn't develop, it's not to do with any problems within the ground. And as you can expect, that's when most of the problem comes when you see something within the ground. Uh, effectively, what we're looking at here is a, is a site where, the, where somebody, a developer, has already started. They've run out of money. They need to raise cash quickly and you're stepping in to effectively take control and take ownership yeah. and you're looking for a partner to build it out with you. Basic, uh, yes, and to add to that, the actual owners are abroad. So if you, the pack I've given you guys is actually a costing for a project manager. So the project manager is the one that's actually selling the site and he's also the one that's built out Pound Lock One. But these two other sites are owned by investors overseas who want to get out because like I've said, they've been in it for about two years now and they haven't seen any money because obviously they have to get this certificate of law for you signed off and all these sort of uh, pre-commencement conditions signed off, which took a couple of, um, one or two years. So they've had enough at the point, but the, pro the project manager has convinced them that you're at the final stage. This is the worst time to sell. You've done all the hard work. And he reached out to myself because he knows it's the type of thing I'm interested. And obviously it is quite short notice, so I'm finding it quite hard to raise the finance. So that's why I've come today, here today, and it needs to be completed before the end of the month what is going on the market. So just talk to us about that then, um, in terms of your comparable evidence, the actual area itself yeah. and your target audience. I know the Northwest area quite well, to be fair. Stoke-on-Trent, we've priced the houses at roughly £200 a square foot, which I think is reasonable for Stoke-on-Trent. It's close to the university, it's close to the train station. You can get to Euston within an hour and a half. It's a good commute. Like you said, it's got lovely views of the canal. And we're asking around 200 to 250000 for three and four bed houses, which I think is reasonable. Are there comparables though at those prices in this? Yes, yes, yes. It's Close comparables in the area. Where have you yeah. got those comparables from? So yeah, I've used online tech tools to look at comparables to see what the current house prices are achieving in the area. And what's the flow of sales in that area? Uh, how yeah, long so to sell? Are as, they going for asking price? Is there a percentage drop? As, as I mentioned, the current area of Stoke on Trent is quite stable in terms of the market. I mean, your average house price, second hand market, you're looking around 200,000. We've added a 10%, 20% premium on top because we know it's going to be a brand new house. Like I said, even not even just the first time buyers, we've got sort of you know, investors who will look to buy it as it's very close to Staffordshire University. It's a great commute, it's in a great location and it's priced very well, so. I'm, I'm not really, sure adding 20% yeah. to a property in Stoke-on-Trent just because it's new build is, is a valid. I mean, I mean, we have been contingent of what, what we think we can achieve. So the existing owners, mm -hmm that you're not connected with. Correct. I got that right. Yeah, correct. Um, they've got um, finance on the site, development yep. finance. Yep. The QSs are all happy, yep. but they're not building it out even though everyone's happy and they've got the finance. Yep. Yep. Is that a concern? It's not a concern because I've evaluated every reason why they've wanted to pull out and the only constraint I could see is the time constraint. What's your build cost per square foot? 120 pounds a square foot. Uh, I mean, your build cost at £120 a square foot seems incredibly light for a new build it is, it next is. to the canal. You know, you need to, I think you need to be over £200 a square foot there. Really I think that's why he doesn't want to build out. Mm. Yeah. I mean, if you look at the cost of construction now, when they originally purchased the plot to what we're able to do now in today's market, yeah. it's considerably more. But, <laughs> but you mentioned QSs have been through this. Yes. How yeah. recently have they been through the uh, build cost figures? That was about six to 12 months ago as well. But um, there's also, like I mentioned, there's another site close by that's being built out right now. And it's the same contractors that are gonna be going on board for the other two sites. And they've already agreed to the JCT contracts on that first site. And we've worked out to be circa 120 pound a square foot. And they're saying they can deliver it on the other two sites. So it's not like I'm going to market. This is the price they're gonna do it for. And they've already started construction on one site. I think the, the difficulty that's been highlighted with these locations and the reason the councils are so you know keen on development, you know, no seal, all the rest, you know, easy to get planning, is that that lack of gap between the build cost and the sale price. You know, it, it's about it's going to be closer to two hundred pounds a square foot to build. What slightly worries me is how confident you are of that build cost, yeah. uh, and you're not, not really listening to five eight experienced angels no, telling you, you that is wildly underestimated. Yeah, I got you. I got you. I got you. What? Why is that? It's because the contractors are on site already, developing very close by, and they've agreed to do the same build on the same development, literally walking distance for the same price. Would you be prepared to consider offers subject to signing a JCD fixed price contract? Of course. Yeah, yeah. Okay.
that makes it more interesting, doesn't it? This one is not for me. Um, I, I find a massive discomfort in areas where the end values per square foot are relatively low because it gives you a relatively little margin for error. But you mentioned your hometown is London. If you get anything closer to the M25, I like you, I like your style. And please email me first Definitely. with anything you have in the future. Definitely will do. I like you. I think your, you know, your background, who you are, you present yourself very well. Um, I don't think that there's enough in this. I think you'd, you'd struggle to profit. Um, and even with, you know, your confidence in terms of your build costs, I think when you add in contingencies and things like that, things can go wrong. I just don't think there's enough meat on the bone for, for it to be for me, uh, but I wish you all the best. Thank you. If you are promising me a JCD contract at that level, I'd quite like to get in with those builders, uh, see if they'll come a bit further south, do some of my deals. This could be a build to rent area because of the risk in the capital values increasing. I think it's a low value area. Um, I haven't seen much capital growth in Stoke for many years. Um, it's one of the worst performing areas in the country, quite frankly. Um, but I've done well with build to rent models in there. In fact, on this show, a couple of series ago, we turned uh, a set of apartments into uh, a set of small HMOs. And we turned that around, flipped it back into auction and made um, about 100 grand for, for the vendor. Um, came on doing the pictures yourself. So I sort of see a little opportunity here, having got that exact experience in Stoke, um, possibly turning all these into HMOs when they're done. I like the fact that all of the, you know, the builders are on site and that the whole team's there. My biggest concern is why aren't they building it? I think we all share that concern. That, that feels like a massive red flag. Um, so, you know, subject to us not uncovering that massive red flag, um, I'm going to make you an offer. Um, I'm going to make you an offer for any equity top up we need um, after development finance and any finance we can, we can gain on the site. I would want to maximise the investment but I'm afraid I'm going to offer you a deal which would be 85% in our favour on the SPV. You would own 15% of it. I like you. I like your hunger. I like your desire. I like your ambition. I like the fact that you've already got um, some uh, HMOs and buy to lets in the Northwest. I like the fact that you are based yourself in the Northwest. You're working in the industry already. You've got contacts with the site. You've got contacts with the people that are going to build the site out for you. The fact that you've got an angel doing the equity, I would be prepared to do the debt with that angel providing the equity. I'd be up for that. I'd be up for working with you, Scott. So much so, I, I'm going to retract my first offer of me alone and actually would rather work with you. So that will be the only offer we're putting forward today. So over to you, Emmanuel. Amazing. Thank you all guys for your time. Thank you for the two amazing offers. Based on the experience you have and this being my first development, I think it'd be a great opportunity to work with you both. So I'm going to accept the offer. Thank you. Thank you. I think you made a good choice. Fantastic. Really looking forward to working with you, sir. Good man. Good. Look forward Cheers. to working with you. Thank you. Cheers. Now, I think uh, he, Emmanuel has made a cracking choice, and I think he has been, um, he's actually thinking a couple of steps ahead because all too often, inexperienced people who are starting out um, don't go for that. They don't see that. Like you offered him basically an 85 15 split. They don't see the benefit and they don't value the benefit of yeah. the, having the experienced angel on board. But he saw that, so I think he'll go far and, he, and, and he's thinking big already. And I think we've covered both bases, haven't we? With the lending side, he might have struggled to get the lending being so inexperienced on such a big site. He, he absolutely would have. So he does need a, an investment partner. Uh, and being honest with you, um, had you not have been involved, I would not have backed Im well, Emmanuel. Exactly. You would despite have struggled, right? his ambition, hunger, experience in terms of working in the sector. For me, what makes this work um, is partnering with you yeah. as well as him. Thank you, yeah. Yeah, like if, if that does work, that's invaluable experience for him, right? You know, big development, his first development, he'll go on to do more. Obviously, I'm just greedy because I don't see uh, the, the profit margin you're looking to achieve. I don't, I don't think it's achievable. I think this will end up falling at the wayside and you guys will be going your separate ways. <laughs> <laughs> the question is though, is this deal by the water or underwater? Uh, Let's see what John has to say. <laughs> Now, I like Stoke-on-Trent, but let's be honest. The prices in Stoke-on-Trent, the values of property are very low. It's almost impossible to make deals work in Stoke-on-Trent if you're building from new. It really is very difficult. What Nicholas and Scott are thinking about, I do not know here, because there's no way these properties can be built 
for what Emmanuel thought. I'm sorry, Emmanuel, but I think I'm right and I think you're wrong. And, and as for those two getting together, let's see how it works. Manny, huge congratulations to you. Thank you, that was amazing. That how was, are you feeling? I feel great. I mean, relieved. Uh, I've got exactly what I wanted. Instead of one angel, I've not actually got two, which is great. Well, we wish you all the best here and thank you so much for coming on Property Elevator. Thank you for having me. Hi, Duncan. Welcome to Property Elevator. Hi, thank you. So firstly, where have you come from today? I've come from Sukup in Kent today. Great. And is that where the investment is as well that you've brought? Oh, no, no, no. It's in Lenham in Kent. Brilliant. OK. And so how much investment are you looking for in terms of uh, the deal with the Angels? Initially, 1.4 million. And so what would it mean then to you if you were to get this funding today? It would be a life changing event. So Duncan is coming in to see us. He's got a commercial to residential redevelopment project in Kent. He's looking for £1.4 million from us uh, and offering us a 60-40 split in our favour. Sounds interesting. Should we have him in? Yeah, let's see what he's got to offer. Um, I'm Duncan. I have 18 plus years of building refurbishment experience. Um, I'm also a project manager. Um, I have a HND in building and architecture. And um, I came out of the, the building game and unfortunately, due to personal circumstances, um, was out of work. I won't go into that, but basically um, it came to the, I was 55 and I took out my pension money and started my own company. And I've always had a love for architecture, so I started a, a, a company finding investment properties for investors. Um, it's not been fantastic, but, you know, it works. Um, this opportunity came along and I thought, right, I'll do one for myself now and come and see you guys. Um, the property itself is a old inn and hotel, and that's in Lenham in Kent. And I believe it would quite, I wouldn't say easily, but I think that you'd get the planning permission to convert the property into four residential properties and then you'd get the planning permission to actually build four more residential properties on the surrounding land. Basically, it's a hotel at the moment. It's an inn and a hotel. So the, 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 the front part of the property mm. is a part 17th century inn. And you're looking to convert the existing building into four, four dwellings? Yes. And build four separate detached dwellings in the grounds? Yes. Uh, which all appear to be beautiful woodlands. Um, have you obtained a planning feasibility report on this? Um, what there, there was a, a sort of a pre-app um, that was done in 2019. That was when the pub was still um, feasible as a business. And unfortunately, due to the lockdown, that the, the pub closed and it hasn't been open since about, I think it hasn't been open for 24 months now. In your pack, you've said that the four detached houses in the grounds, what you propose to do is to split off the title. So you have four separate titles to put in four separate applications to build yes. four separate houses because you think that will be easier. Or, the the uh, reason for it was, what's, what's the one there? of the things that the council brought up was because of the size of the plot, they would want 40% affordable housing on the plot. Okay, no, I, I understand that, but I'm just say, saying to you, that won't fool any council. They will see right through that, the fact that you've just split the titles in order to make it look as though they're four separate plots of land. Right. They will look at the history um, and they will look at who's behind those companies and it would be, um, it, it would just put their back, uh, uh, their nose out of joint quite considerably against your proposal because it would okay. be purely transparent what you're trying to do. Um, listen, I'm going to um, show my cards quite early here. This is not for me because I, you can't even consider these sort of applications without a proper planning feasibility no, document. No. Okay. So I'm, I, I'm basically not going to proceed with this. I'll leave it to the other angels to see what they want to do. Just a couple of questions on the numbers. Um, sure. So uh, you mentioned that you're looking for 1.4 million from us, uh, potentially uh, the total Costs are about three and a half or thereabouts. Uh, yes, right? yeah, thereabouts. Where would the other um, 
Where would the, other, the balance come from? I think that would be, be decided on once the, the planning had gone through. So I didn't think as, it, did you have funds to contribute? I don't know. No. It would be sweat finance. equity from me. Okay. In the pack, um, if I'm honest, I'm disappointed. Okay. In, in any walk of life, you have to remember the six Ps, which is prior preparation and planning prevents poor performance. Yep. Okay. In this pack, there is very limited data, limited reasons to go and um, why you'd want to build here, um, limited um, data as to the demand for the properties. Um, you're not contributing anything other than bringing the deal and the, the so-called sweat equity. Um, and I think that it's naive of you, if I'm honest, and therefore I'm going to be dead straight and say, this is Bit not one harsh. for me. And I wish you, <laughs> and I wish you um, all the very best for the future. As always, you know, the, the, the angels do miss many tricks. Oh. Um, <laughs> on this occasion, however, they haven't. That would be a first here, um, you know, in the angels uh, circle. Um, and, and I kind of echo Scott's, uh, you know, points there really on a more, um, you know, more friendly basis. Obviously, I'm not quite as mean as Scott. He's a, he's a banker. Um, he's got I'm a credit a team behind him. A financier. 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 You mispronounced, yeah. did you? Yeah, sorry. No, no, no. <laughs> really, all you need to do today was come in with that feasibility yes. study on the planning. Yeah. More detail on the pre-app. I can ask you about that. I get a feeling you probably won't have as much detail as I'd like yep. um, about what that pre-app was. Um, there could be a scheme here if you kept the pub open, leased that out, maybe converted two of the rear houses. There's a reason why the pub was closed. There's, there's limited demand for people. Yeah, but if you can't get football. planning, you know, yeah, you either fight for the planning and, and or, actually, or you keep the pub open, right? And the, just develop the, the rest of the, the site. Planner, the planners are not going to uh, give you consent for residential residential use unless they know that the, plant, the pub is not viable. So the pub it, has to not be yeah, viable yeah. in order to get the I agree. Also, is, there, is there any other pubs local to there's this There's 18. Oh, wow, okay. Right. <laughs> there is there's a good yeah. argument, yeah. but they didn't like it at the time. They might not like it now. Yeah. So what I'm saying is, even if they don't like it now, we want to pre out for the four new houses. This could work with four new built houses. Just leave the pub open or, or try and lease the pub and whatever. Fight that, you know, but like you said, split the title, yeah. not in some sort of planning, um, you know, loophole, but fight for the four houses. Get that. That would add a load of value. But you know, so I want to see, I want to see a pre out for that. Um, and I want to see a vi viability study for that. Um, and then you might have something that's worth bringing. I know you can't do that in a, in a few days, no, right? so don't get no. me wrong, but you could have had a planning consultant look at this for a few hours and yes. you could have brought that. So it leaves us totally in the dark. I mean, I could have picked any land site in the whole of England and gone, there's a closed pub with a load of land <laughs> and I could probably find a thousand on one of the tech I think softwares Nicholas out there. a bit harsh. Um, <laughs> and so, you know, the, yeah, the friendly bit of advice is to do those little bits um, and come with something more tangible. I'd love to have made sure. you an offer. I'd love to have said, let's do it subject to planning. That but was I'd... a really long way of saying yeah. you're out, by the way. Yeah, well, uh, well, I'm not out. I'm just not in. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to be like a lot it. more concise than my friend Nicholas. <laughs> and I agree with what the guys have said. You know, even just some comparables and some reasons as to why this makes sense in this location, which you kind of had, but you kind of didn't. Um, uh, the way it's been presented, it's not really investable. No, you know, we, okay. we can't confidently say, yes, we'll give you 1.4 million quid, and therefore it's not really doable. Okay, yeah. I think you're a lovely guy. It's great that you've put the pack together. It, Thank you. It's lacking a hell of a lot of information for sure. me. Um, it's a great idea, uh, but as Nicholas said, we could pick up many lots yeah, yeah, and, sure. and just say, well, that will make a great investment. Without the, the information to back it up, the feasibility report, it's really not worth no. anything at this moment okay. in time. Okay. So if you go away, look at that, um, maybe come back on season seven with uh, something a little bit more meaty and something that we can actually invest in and have okay. good confidence in you and the deal. Sure. Yeah. All right. Sorry to say that you haven't had an offer here today. No, fair enough. Um, I think the main thing has been the, the to come in with um, some feasibility of how viable the proposal is. That's, sure. that's the main thing that was lacking here. Um, but thank you very much for coming in. Yep, it's all right. Thank you for um, having me. Wish you pleasure. all the best in, in your property journey. So Duncan, how are you feeling? How were you going into the room? I was nervous. Yeah. yeah. I was I, I sort of, you know, I'm sort of quite uptight. <laughs> so. But did it go well? Did you feel like you got some constructive criticism and some advice to move forward? Yes, yes, most definitely. Obviously I didn't get the deal, um, but now I know what I need to do and what I need to bring back. So I'll get those done and I'll be back. Excellent. Do you still think it's a potential deal that you could do? 
I do, yes. Good. Well, good luck. I hope it goes really well. And thank you for coming on Property oh, Elevator today. thank you for having today. me. Yeah, <laughs> thank you. It was just not there, was it? Not enough info to really make <laughs> any sense. I think if you of. want to put in a proposal with planning permission, you've got to come here with a feasibility uh, report. Uh, and basically, all you need is that. If you had come in, I mean, he found the deal last Thursday. As you said, if you're taking three hours of a consultant's time and just given, come in with a two or three page uh, report from yeah. a planning consultant and talked through the deal with a picture, that would have been... Even, even comments. Also, the, the comparable, the, there was no comparable evidence. No. Uh, he didn't know who his target audience was. There was no I data around really the value of properties in the, in the area. There was yeah. a, a, no, no ideas of the size of the, the, the population, the, the transport no. links. It was just... Time to sell. Yeah. Ta and nothing, yeah. nothing yeah. at all. I think yeah. that's a, a naive pitch. But you know, you know, we haven't seen something here. Uh, perhaps John would. I you wonder. Know, he has a way of I putting wonder. things out of the fire. Let's see what he says. Duncan, why did you come in with that deal with no information on it, uh, no pre-app, no information? It's all been said. In fact, Hayley, I think, sums it up very well. Uh, you've got to give yourself a chance on these shows, you know, and you've got to come in with more information to give the angels something, just something to work with. You gave them nothing. And I think Hayley sums it up really well. Sorry, Duncan. So we have uh, Stephen Robinson uh, coming to see us now uh, with a deal that looks pretty interesting. It's a bank job, commercial to residential conversion. A lot of those banks becoming defunct. This is down in Beaconsfield. He's after 296K, rather specific amount, for a 50-50 uh, share of the profit. So let's see what he's got to say. Hello, angels. Um, my name is Stephen Robinson. I'm a former builder turned property developer. I've completed a number of conversions, sorry, property developments in the last few years uh, from a single new build to commercial conversion. Um, th uh, the deal I bring to the room today is a former Lloyds Bank in Beaconsfield. Um, I would like to use pre permitted development rights to convert it into four flats and a, and a single shop. Um, with a further 200 banks closing this year, I have identified four further banks in my local area I would like to purchase. Um, angels, please come and buy banks with me. <laughs> Will our money, money be? in the safes? <laughs> <laughs> Don't get rid of the safes. Yeah. They're, they're difficult. They're hard work. No, keep I them. know. We're, we're doing. There's a couple of us doing banks <laughs> at the moment. Them. Always, always keep them. So you've done some property deals and property development deals in I, the past. I have. Yep. Okay. How have you funded those, and what kind of profits have you made from those deals that you've done? So um, the I funded them myself. Uh, my building company was fairly successful. I sort of took control of that and parked that a little bit to try property development. And uh, my, my last one, which was a commercial conversion in Exmouth, which is near uh, Exeter, down the southwest, and I made 21% on costs. So this list is the banks that are on offer that you want to buy. This so is that's kind of your that's, plan. They're, they're the ones I want to buy. They're, um, I'm complete. Mm, I'm almost complete on a bank in Chesham uh, with CBRE. So they're the banks that CBRE are selling, just the banks CBRE are selling. So hopefully with an angel on board and I'll be a completer because two people didn't complete on this bank and I'm very close to exchange. What does the rest of your building company business look like? In terms um, of a uh, number of people you're in, you, you, I you don't, employ? I don't employ anybody now. You do all the work yourself? My, my problem, it, w why I don't have a pipeline of deals, is I go out to tender to builders and they're flaky and they take ages. And I keep falling into the trap of just gearing up with staff and end up doing the deals myself. So, but that's not helping me going forward. This is, there's certain things I need help with now and that's becoming a better businessman and stop falling into the trap of being, because builders are quite difficult to get hold of at the moment. So I just end up going, oh, that's good. Oh, four months, I could do it in four months, or, you know. So you've come off the tools. Yes, oh, yes. I've been so you off have other tool. builders that work for you, yes. doing the projects that you win. Yes. Yeah, he's struggling it. to find good main contractors, is what Got he's it. saying. Yeah, and then, you know, the good main contractors are like three or four months to six months ahead, especially where we are, where we live. Yeah. And so then I, I fall into the trap, I trap myself. Okay, right, I can do this. Can I just check? Is it five flats 
and a commercial unit all full because there's conflict in information. Yeah, sorry, forgive, forgive the pack. Um, I saw that yesterday morning. So I came, I, I saw the property yesterday morning. And so I put the pack together last night, essentially. Yeah, it is only four flats. So the four, four flats are one yeah, shop. So that is a typo. Flats. There is a few typos in there. I've just read through the pack. <laughs> I was like, are there's the, are typos the numbers in there. right aside from that? These sorry? numbers right aside from that typo? Yes, yes. And, and you've had an offer accepted on them? Not yet, no, this, okay. this, is gonna, this is to go to, we're gonna have to put an offering on this. So how much are you looking for from us? The minimum I would like is 296,000. That's 40% of the purchase price. Then we could move on to development finance after that. But what I'd really like is the whole of the purchase price so we can move fast on this because it's advertised uh, over 900, which is, Mm, it's not going to get that, but what I would like to do is say, look, we've got cash we can complete in six to eight weeks and secure this thing, because this is in, I think you won't know the area around Jen, but mm. like this is in top, this is this is as good it gets in in, in the outskirts of London, you know? Six hundred, I've gone five, seven, five, seven, nine for the residential, but this is like, oh God, this is walking distance, literally five minutes of the station, Beaconsfield station, so. Yeah. It's very expensive. How actually. confident could, are you um, to be able to get it at the 675? I think it would be about speed. So as what, what I've learned recently from commercials is there's people out there will pay more, but they won't complete. Because I mean, this, this, unless you can find a commercial to go in there, uh, to, to take the space, the, all the space, you know, I, I think then it would yield up, but I just could, it's just crying out for this. And if the, the figures are the figures, we can't go high, I can't go higher, I can't go lower. You know, I, if someone could help me, maybe, maybe we see a slightly better deal, we might be able to offer more. But that, I don't ever go away from the figures because that's what it's worth to me. Stephen, you're absolutely right. In terms of that's volatility, fair. it becomes a buyer's market. You're 100% right. 200 banks come in as well, so. Oh, come on, guys. Let's, let's so can, do it. Can I just clarify <laughs> one of the things? It. Sorry, can I just clarify yeah. one of the things from the numbers, which mm. is, um, so you're paying all in seven seven hundred ish thousand pounds for the property, the freehold, mm. um, and you're going to spend roughly half a million pounds on it, converting it into retail downstairs, effectively, and four flats upstairs. Of the total costs, which are around about one point two million, mm. how much of that are you personally? able to put into that 1.2 million? Well, I mean, I would say I could probably, I, I could raise further funding of 200K. I could, I could I've got a, the, I've got two deals going on and a lot of my money's there. Quick question, um, in the timeline, so you said 26 to 41 weeks, and it mentions about completing them, renting them out, refinancing them, and then selling them. Just yeah, want to understand the logic. Sorry, there. sorry, yeah, that's two options. Okay. So, so if, we wanted, if we wanted to sell, then I've left six months at the end to sell. And if, okay. we could do, if we went it out, oh, so that's the time frame from completion to, to yes. Get to selling. So the okay. shorter time frame is is for the rental and refinance, and the longer the longer is for the, for the sale. I did. It was late last night. I did have a gant no, job, but it didn't enough. make a lot of sense. <laughs> the rest of the high street, and I, I take your point about the location and how near it is to the station but the rest of the high street and what's occupied and not occupied here, what does that look like? Um, yeah, so I, was, I, I took a walk yesterday morning um, and the shops this size, uh, there was three or four empty, which is, I think is good. Uh, good for us to buy, not so much good, good to sell. Um, yes, so there's, there's a few, few buildings and there's a few more. There's a NatWest coming up, which I've got my eye on, um, which is just up the road from that. And it's, um, yeah, there's this, uh, what I've spoke to the agents on my other deal, they said no one's really after these big long shops anymore because they don't want to fit them out. You know, they, they, they're lots to fit out. It's dead space, you know, no one really wants them. So in my, in my um, I've done an amazing course. <laughs> done an amazing course. And um, <laughs> that course said make smaller shops at the front to go after different people, um, go after sort of viable people and bring it under the rates threshold. So. On your layouts of the flats, mm. um, you've had a, you've got a large storage area at the back. Yeah. Um, 
I guess that's because there's no natural light at the back. That's the vault in the back. That's the vault, is it? Yeah. That's why so you've kept it as it is. If you went for planning for windows, they'll take the PD rights away. So I, just, I, I tend to, the deal works as it is. So that's why the money is, obviously that's much more valuable as residential, I know that. But uh, changing it, doing it, I think will be quite tough. The thing is just bank, bank the PD now as it is, the minimum you can get away with the current layout, and then go back for a fenestration application to add in extra windows and any layout changes um, and try and get more. You know, the key is to bank the first Absolutely. minimum of PD, then go for some incremental increases Perfect. Um, whilst you maybe start in the front half of the building. So you've got here no market for one beds, high value area, no problem, low. Yeah. Have you, what does that mean? Have you actually so, checked so, this market? <clears throat> so it's a high value area. So, so if you want to buy a three or four bed house, you're looking at 1.2 to 1.5 million. So, so creating the smaller units. Uh, so a risk would be you create a load of one beds and there's no demand for it. But have you done research on that demand? So I know the area. So I, ha have a, I haven't done any research, but I already know the, en the low entry point of just that unit, which is across the road from the station. If you want to live in Beaconsfield or even to, then you, there is a market for the smaller units because of the value of where they are. I can't see a high enough return for me as an investor in this. I'm a fellow developer, done plenty of commercial Terezi deals just like this and, and some smaller, some a lot bigger, up to 30 or thousand square foot. Um, and so I, I'm not attractive enough to this as an investment to take that money out of one of my own potential sites and put it into yours. Okay. Um, I really like you. Um, potentially would love to work with you in some capacity, joint venture or mentorship, whatever you need, if you don't get an offer today from one of the other angels. Um, but as a pure investment, um, it's not one for me. But uh, do stay in touch and um, yeah, wish you well on your, on your journey. Thank you very much. Thank you. Nick's declared. Paul, go for it. I'm, I'm still thinking. I'm going to have a think as well. Scott? I'm just working on an angle at the moment, so I'll pass this one to Hayley. I'm happy to wait until last. <laughs> oh, dear me. <sighs> dear. All right, on, I'll, I'll go the then. I'll go. Um, I'm going to make you an offer, and but the offer is contingent on partnering with another angel, and that's Scott. So I'll give you all the cash you need to buy it and build it out, so long as Scott will finance the balance and between us, we'll give you all the money you need to do it. Okay, very good offer. I would be prepared, okay, if Paul came in um, to do all of the development finance that's needed um, on this transaction with your 50K. Obviously, you'll need to use some of that 250K as a float, as we've talked about, um, and Paul putting in the money that you need um, in order to support the transaction. Thank you for your offer. Well, thanks, guys. I can't really compete with that, so, uh, yeah. Well, give it a go. <laughs> or don't. <laughs> okay, so my offer is, I'll put up the full purchase price, cash, but I want it 60-40 split in my favour. Okay. Interesting. Would you, would this be only one deal that you could do, or is it possibly, if, if I was to then identify another bank in the next few, years, the next few weeks? Would, it, would this be an ongoing thing or would it just be this one? Obviously, we'd have to go through the due diligence. Yeah. As we all say, uh, you know, property's about people. I think you're great. I, I love you. You've got great energy. You seem like a real good, honest person and um, somebody that will roll, roll their sleeves up and, and uh, make good on their promise. Um, I get a good feeling about you, so I'd be more than happy to do multiple deals as long as they stack up. Yeah. Stephen, I like... I very much like you and your energy. And I know a lot of the buildings that you've um, had. Um, uh, I know all the issues with the Cheshire one. I'm actually doing um, six projects in your general area right now. I know all the agents that you're dealing with. Um, I know all the players. I know a lot of these projects as well. I also know PD very well, as you know. Um, and I can add a huge value to your uh, plans going forward because I'm, I'm doing quite a lot myself I'm also help, um, advising uh, um, students who are doing more than 30 of these uh, conversion type projects currently there's only so much I can do myself 
Yeah. And ideally, I'm looking for someone like you to kind of partner with on a long term basis. So I would um, be able to offer the long term. I'd be able, I would be happy if Scott is willing to um, uh, basically offer you um, the same proposition that Paul offered, but with the PD expertise. To demonstrate that, I'll just, sh uh, because it's very important with PD to get your application in first time every time. Now with your flat layouts, for example, a small thing you've missed is the, four, the flat four is a duplex flat technically. The minimum space standards for duplex flats are 70 square meters and you've got 65 square meters. Now that could be um, amended simply by moving the front door to flat four in a different place. Now that sort of knowledge will get you these applications through first time every time, as opposed to waiting 56 days to be told that and then having to resubmit. So those are the things, and I know about, I knew about all the issues with the Chesham because I saw that property that you saw as well. So what I'm offering is that deal that um, um, uh, Paul offered with the backing of the permitted development expertise and also with the knowledge of the area that you're operating in as well and the agents that you're dealing with uh, knowing them as well. God. Might I add, I've got a very good planning consultant. <laughs> <laughs> so if I can summarise, you've got one angel, Paul, looking to do a deal with Oh, you haven't said whether you'd work with me. So no, he won't. he won't. One second, you've got one, one angel, Paul, who's He's looking to... He's jumped in on all of our offers, basically. You, you've got one angel, Paul, <laughs> Um, who's looking to do a deal with another angel that's me. You've got Ranjan, another angel, looking to do a transaction with me, another angel, to support you. And potentially, I think, hey, you've got Haley as well, that is looking to do why a deal. Why potentially you think because you've got Haley? And I'll explain why you do have Haley. me as an option. So I'll explain why potentially. Um, Haley is offering you 100% of the purchase price. On the basis that Haley is offering 100% of the purchase price without your 50K going in, for me, it's important that you have some skin in the game. So unless Haley kind of pull, pairs back her offer by the 50K, then I would not be interested to do the deal with Haley because for me, I think it's important that you've got some skin in the game. You've got some downside pain as well as the upside gain. I agree, I agree. So the ball really is in Haley's court to decide whether she wants my to change her. My offer my offer. I have other people that would uh, fill uh, Scott's shoes. Ooh. You've yes, obviously sure. got offers from the two slash three angels over oh, there. A bit so. of a boys club at the end. <laughs> or the lovely Haley, who is a cash offer, less money in from you. But you've I'm obviously way heard. better looking. You've, you've heard oh, of the benefits. You do say so yourself. <laughs> well, actually. You do you want to take a moment to, at the back of the room to have a think? Or uh, no, 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 ready? I'm there. I'm there. I, I, I would like to turn the tables a little bit because I, I believe in myself. I think I have certain issues um, around mindset. About um, I, I need a. I, I'd like to be a better businessman. Okay, I feel like I'm a good businessman, but I feel like I'd be a better businessman. Better bu business decisions. Don't get on site. Don't do the building work. Um, so. It, does anybody offer not one-to-one -one mentorship or a mentorship program that I could go on? All of us. <laughs> we all, I will we throw in a place on my commercial uh, property conversion mastermind. So you'll be around um, 30 plus developers who are doing this thing day in, day out. Well, that's made the decision. Oh, listen, thank you everybody for your offers because they're very, uh, very well, well received. Um, I would like to go with Ranjan and Scott. Brilliant, good choice. Well done. Thank you. Well done. I thought it was working with you. It's a great oh, project. Oh, we're great. We're great. Uh, no, I mean, for me, this is fantastic because, as I said, I've got six of these on the go at the That's moment. That's because you've got the deal. Huh? <laughs> it's not fantastic. <laughs> no, 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 no. What I mean is, it's fantastic <laughs> for me because I like doing these projects, uh, but there's only so many you can do. And to work with someone like that yeah. long yeah. term, no, he's great. to do these sort of projects in the area that I know. And, and we had to let you have a deal, didn't we, Anjan? Hmm? We have to let you do a deal. Yeah, yeah that's right. true. I'm not sure you want one like that for a while, so I know you wanted that deal. And you, I'll, you really yeah, did yeah, fight yeah, for that one, actually. Congratulations. <laughs> you really fought for it. The, well done, Ranjan. best man won. <laughs> well, well done, Scott, as well. I look forward to, looking forward to working with you. It's yeah. be good fun. Good team. But what would John say? Would he have shared on this one, do you think? Do you think uh, John would have done a deal with me? John doesn't share. This building looks about as old as John. <laughs>
<laughs> it's been in the family for a hundred years. Maybe John, maybe John's family bought it. Maybe they're the vendors. Maybe John bought it. Stephen, you've come in with lots of ideas, lots of deals. The one deal you brought was the wrong deal. And so many of your experience, because you are quite experienced, should know that. Uh, you've learned a valuable lesson. You've got Ranjan on board still, which is a good effort, and Scott. So, you know, you've got, you've got a dream team there if you can all work together. Let's see how you get on. So Stephen, I heard it went amazingly well. Yes, I can't believe it. I got three offers. I was very nervous in there. I think they, I think they liked the deal I brought. So I'm really, really pleased to come out with, uh, with an offer accepted. You've come away with a deal. You look ecstatic. We're all super happy for you here and we wish you all the best. Thank you so much and thank you for letting me come on. Well, what an episode that was. We had deals, we had drama, everything was going on today. But that's all we've got time for. We'll see you next time.